We're down on the border southeast of Sierra Vista, Arizona with Sheriff Mark Daniels of Cochise County. Sheriff, thanks for taking the time to talk to Texas no GOP vote today. No problem. You know, we uh, met you about a year ago uh, just before you'd been elected but hadn't been sworn in yet. And Correct. It's great to get a chance to come back and, and see you here. Good to have you out here. You hey. know, see the real border. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I uh, when I was out here in December, I went to Naco, which is in your county as well, and the fence is totally different there. The security is totally different. You see here this thing that anybody can just walk across. What's going on along here? We've been driving for about a half an hour now. I haven't seen any border patrol, any thing except your people. And yeah, this is this is the federal government's plan of border security. This, you're living it and seeing it right now where you have security measures in a plethora form near the populated areas, which is just to the uh, due east of us, about 30 miles. Mm -hmm. To the west of us, and then over this hill, as the crow flies, about five miles is a town of 40,000 people, and you see what's protecting it. Yeah. And uh, But to 30 miles east of us is a port of entry. Part mm -hmm. of the plan was port of entries and the populated areas that specifically were designed was Yuma, San Diego, and El Paso. Those towns have. They have a lot, uh, a lot more measures in place to make them safer areas. Mm -hmm. This is a result of rerouting the, the illegal activity from those areas to this area here. And at night, if you look just to your backside, Bob, mm -hmm. is a trail. And behind this camera is the trails up the mountain and then up, up and over they go, up into different areas where they get picked up, or they go to stash houses into our, our city and county areas behind us. And this trail that's right down here that uh, we'll show a picture of while we're talking, uh, that's trafficked so much that it, it's worn down like what we would call a cattle trail in Texas. It, it is. And, yes. and that's their regular pathway along here. When the, when the night falls is when the, the activity grows. And, and, you, and you're exactly right. I mean, as we go up the hill and then take a left and go into the flatlands to the south of us here, mm -hmm. uh, it's wide open. It's wide open. You don't see the technology that you do 30 miles east of us. And uh, Now, when we were talking driving out here today, um, it sounds like the violence along this border, not Pretty much before it had been restricted to the southern side of the border. Recently, it's really escalating on this side. Tell us about the, the shootout that happened. Uh, recently here, a week ago, we had a, a shootout with uh, the drug folks, the cartels. Uh, 100, 100 plus rounds were shot. We had four pe uh, were fired, four, four people were shot. We airbagged four of them into Tucson uh, for you know, obviously critical injuries and uh, we detained nine initially, and uh, we indicted uh, some of those folks already for attempted murder. Nobody's died as a result of that, but it's the violence in these in these communities that, unfortunately, our border uh, folks, are, our community folks, our citizens are becoming numb to. We had a National Park Service here about a month ago, three weeks ago, that was brutally assaulted uh, mm -hmm. by a smuggler that um, literally crushed her head in with a brick and didn't want to do it once, did it twice, sad to say, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then stole her vehicle. And uh, uh, so, again, it's... The violence on our east side, our home invasions. Over the last month, we've had six home invasions where they're stealing arms, rifles, handguns, and we've arrested six of those as a result of our new border team mm -hmm. that's made up of sheriff's folks and federal agents, uh, law enforcement from Border Patrol and Customs that are helping us do this. But it's a problem down here. It's a serious problem. And this border team that you mentioned, that's something that you've created since you were sworn in Correct. in January. What What is the role of that team? That team's primary role is to work crimes with a nexus to the border. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be sitting on the border where you and I are standing. They're going to work the private, the public lands, and the recreational lands to help the quality of the citizens that live here and help their quality of life and, uh, and, and identify and deter those kind of crimes. So. Now, a lot of sheriffs, when you talk to them about border security, they'll say immigration is not a, a state issue, not, a, not a, something that we should be involved in. Clearly, you're enforcing state law here. Correct. When people break into these homes or trespass on this property, these are state crimes, and, and you're going after that. That is correct. And this border is a federal problem. Mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll put it on the record. It's a federal problem. We have 1,300 border patrol agents in our county and another 200 custom folks. So 1,500 federal agents in a county that's got 6,300 6, square miles mm -hmm. and 8,83 miles of the national border. Mm -hmm. you think you could, you'd think you have a, a resolution here, but we don't. We don't. And uh, the emphasis is on the port of entries and uh, somewhat of the populated areas. And so now, I saw 20, 30 customs vehicles at the checkpoint 40, 50 miles inland up here north of town, what 
kind of effectiveness. I mean, I know that's not these guys' fault. These guys are doing what they're told to do. Let me just put on the record, the men and women of Border Patrol do a hell of a job, and they got a very dangerous job. And, I, and please don't read me wrong in that. We work very closely with them. Right. We're proud to have them here. The issues lie is the, the leadership to the north of me and to the east of me, all the way to the east of me, um, uh, their strategic plan on how they deploy. Mm -hmm. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, is when, when our federal leaders see that the border is not a discretionary program, it should be a mandated program, we'll see a difference down here. Right mm -hmm. now, I don't see that paradigm shift. Hmm. The other thing we talked about when we were driving down here is what you're doing with the court system. You've got a way of basically moving these guys through the system and getting them convicted and in prison quickly where they can stop being a threat here on the border. Tell us about that. Our new um, uh, border team, again, working the interior part of Cochise County, my county, is the fact that if we get smugglers, what we're doing is we're snagging them up and we're prosecuting them on a state level. And uh, we have a early resolution court that actually uh, takes them in within two weeks. They're already in our uh, prison system mm -hmm. for a two-year sentence. So you want to smuggle dope through this county, we're going to put you in prison for two years, working in partnership with our county attorney. We're not going to mess around with them. Now, some people would say two years, that, that's not very much for what they're doing, but you're quickly getting these guys out of the system and out of the resources of what the drug cartels can use. They've got to replace those people then at that point. They, they have to replace them, plus it deters. We're taking their product. Mm -hmm. They can't make money if I have their product, and we'll continue doing that. We don't want them in our county. If they want to move east, they want to move west then move, but right now we don't want them in our county. We're gonna do our part. How many miles of border do you have on your, your county? 83 miles. 83 miles, and there's 1,300 Border Patrol agents? 1,300 Border Patrol and 200 uh, Customs. How many deputies do you have? 86, and uh, that includes me. And then you take away the, the fact I have, right now, seven in the academy, and we're still three or four down. You're running a staff that's about 70 some people. That's not a lot. And I have 6,300 square miles plus the general crime that we deal with, mm -hmm. domestics, DUIs, fights, burglaries, the, the general crimes that law enforcement agencies at a local level deal with. Puts a real burden on us, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Now you've made a priority of, of the border to protect, not necessarily to try to do the federal government's job, but to protect these residents that live in these towns right over here. Yeah, that's a mandate. Mm -hmm. I I understand the the situational awareness that we have to have to live on a border. And number two is, uh, it's an expectation of me um, for my citizens and my citizens for me, and it comes to, I need to protect them. Um, what the Border Patrol does, and what the federal government does on their border, I can't control that, but what I can control what happens in my county, and we're mm -hmm. gonna do our part. Let's uh, let's get back in the truck and drive around a little bit again and, okay. and look at, at some more things that you wanna show okay. us, and we'll get back on camera again in a minute. All right, sounds good, right, thanks, thanks, Bob. Well, we just got back from our trip to the border with Sheriff Daniels and I'm going to sit down here out in front of your house and uh, as the heat of the Arizona summer is cooling down a little bit, I can feel it dropping. It drops fast out here. It, it does. It's not. This is a beautiful time of year for Arizona. It's nice and cool at night. Yeah, we, we really like that. Uh, in Texas, you know, if it's 95, it, when the sun goes down, it'll be 93 about midnight. So no, not that here. humidity holds the heat. Let's talk about, you know, we were down on the border and... Uh, dealing with an aspect that you're having to deal with because the federal government won't take on its responsibility properly of securing the border. Let's talk about the rest of your job as, as sheriff. Um, tell us what Cochise County is like. It's a historic county in law enforcement in, in, Texas, in uh, Arizona and the West history. It's a very western county. It it's, has its heritage and uh, very ranching agriculture. Mm -hmm. I'd say 89% of our county livelihood comes from that. Uh, we do have a military base, Fort Huachucas is here in Sierra Vista, which is kind of the corner of the county, which is a metro type area. But again, 89% of our county, uh, the legacy of it, the livelihood of it is ranching community, very mm -hmm. westernized. You have residents in your community that have tens of thousands of, of acre ranches and Correct. large wide open spaces. And then you have cities that you have to deal with as well. I mean, you have local police departments. but residential community a lot of that type of issues as well yes very true now one of the things that you've talked about in the past is, is your role in sheriff in protecting the rights of, of people particularly in relation to the second amendment when things were going on with with uh, president obama attacking the second amendment right. uh, you've got this letter that you've put out making a state a very strong statement about that tell us about that well as with sheriffs throughout this country, we take a constitutional oath 
and that oath is to support the Constitution and the laws of the lands that we were embraced to protect. And uh, so to me, it, it's simple when it comes to our Second Amendment, and that is to support that. You know, and I, I look at that here, and I apply that to Cochise County, where if we ever, and uh, fear we not, ever take the guns away and, and violate our Constitution and the Second Amendment, that we take their guns away, and my ranchers are out there unprotected in a county that uh, is not protected by the border, which and, and the, the open uh, scenes of our border that our assaults, our home invasions, our murders, that uh, as a result of all of our border and they can't protect themselves. I, I couldn't even imagine that. And uh, no, I, I'm a constitutional sheriff. We, we support the Constitution. I take an oath for that. The day I can't support that oath is Dan needs to step down as being sheriff. Uh, I, I came out with a comprehensive statement in regards to that, uh, to support the Constitution and, and the wording within. You know, I'm very strong in this when I speak. Uh, our culture and society has changed over the last 30 to 50 years, and, and you look at what's changed. The three institutions that have really changed over the, uh, these last three or four or five decades is very simply the ones that are fractured, family, faith, and education. They are fractured, and I, and I say this, and it's the evil that works within our communities, that law enforcement, public safety, and each individual in our communities has to take a situational awareness and heighten that when it comes to making a difference and embracing our neighbors, embracing our families and, uh, and our loved ones and change and change from where we're at now uh, to where we were at. We need to look at our history and repeat that and get back into taking care of those family values. Now, when you became sheriff in, in January, of course, you'd had a long career here before you moved up to Oregon, became chief of police up there, moved back here and became sheriff. What was your biggest surprise and what had changed between when you were here before and when you came back? Well, I, I've had the benefit of work. I was in the military. Uh, from, I grew up in Illinois, came out here at the military, and got out of the military uh, in 1984 and joined law enforcement. So I've had the luxury and benefit of working in Cochise County since 1984. Even when I went to Oregon, I came back every three months and worked in Cochise County. Mm -hmm. So I've seen the change. I, I've, we've always had border issues. The difference between 30 years ago and now is the complexity with the border. The, the failed attempts, and I say that, when it comes to using border as discretionary political posturing by some, um, instead of just making the border a mandate. With Look at the history here in the last 12 years. Just with the 9-11 attack, you know, 3,000 of our Americans were killed uh, by an evil that came into our country. The um, domestic terrorism that happens. You look at all this, and it's like we as society need to do a better job of protecting uh, number one ourselves, and number two our communities and our society. And right now, our borders, 2,000 plus miles of southwest border, and, and we're vulnerable. Here. We're so vulnerable. We talk about the drugs and the folks. Um, coming across the human smuggling. But one thing we forget is the terrorist element that comes across mm -hmm. our southwest border. That should scare the heck out of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the wide open borders that we see here in Cochise County. It scares me as a sheriff, and I know it scares my citizens. But unfortunately, we've become numb here in Cochise County based on the fact is the lack of attention on our border. Have we done better in certain parts of our southwest border? Yes, they have, and that was their plan. Have they neglected parts of our southwest border? I consider the non-populated areas. Yes, they have. They need to redefine the plan before they put a maintenance key into border security. And don't blend immigration reform with border security. Two separate programs. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of feeling that you have to address one before the other. Correct. They are two completely separate issues. Um, they're also very complicatedly interwoven. Uh, one, of, one of the things that we look at is that if um, you increase the border security without fixing the immigration problem, it creates more and more demand for the human trafficking side of it because there's not a legal way for people that do want to come here to work. But um, I talked to some residents from Cochise County last night. At, at, we were at the Brian Terry event, you were there. Yes. And um, it was interesting that you, you're winning people over here. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed is you seem to be a cop's cop. Correct. So how is that impacting your, your relation with the community? Well, number one, I'm being transparent with them. Mm -hmm. Something that I know there's a lot of frustration with our federal government. We're being transparent, we're being upfront, we're holding meetings with them, we're setting up programs, and we're, 
that we've listened to them and these are the programs that can directly affect their quality of life. And we're, and we're putting efforts forward to see if it'll work. I don't, as, as an elected official, uh, and that's hard for me to say sometimes mm -hmm. and when I say that because the, the label of being elected is the word being political. Mm -hmm. And being a cop for almost 30 years and working operations and just trying to make a difference and, and a positive difference and then now I'm elected and I get that political stigma. Nothing's changed. I look at the political side and I'm very blessed to be elected as a sheriff, but I put the political side on one side but I, and I focus on my public safety component and how I can make a positive difference and, and that goes with putting programs together and being effective, being efficient when it comes to the, fun, the funding of it. And right now we're doing our darnest to, to enhance the quality of life with our citizens here and, and at least working in partnership with them. And along goes with that goes along with our public safety partners, our federal agencies, uh, our state and other city police departments. And together we, we, we have a strong passion to, to do that and it's working. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for talking, taking the time to take me down to the border and, and take a look at what's going on down there. As much attention as I paid to this issue, it's still shocking to come down there and, and see firsthand the the starkness of you know one in the fence versus just wide open border down there. You, you know, one of the reasons I do that, and I keep my door open to the media. That's all media mm -hmm. to come down and and we'll provide it to her tomorrow morning. I have another group coming in at seven thirty in the morning is so they can see really what's going on. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between uh, media reporting and I call it entertainment media. Right. And there's conflict media and then there's real media. I look at the real media. I want the, not just the citizens of County, they know what's going on in this county, mm -hmm. but America needs to take a deep look at what's going on in these unsecured borders. I mean, are there efforts that have happened over the last 30 years that have been positive out of the Southwest border? Yes. Is it a fix-all? We all know that's not true. It's not. Mm -hmm. I know they want to say our borders are more secure than ever. That, that's a partially true statement. Mm -hmm. But we know here in Cochise County is um, from the murder, from aggravated assaults, from cartel shootings. These are all just recent events since I've, um, that I've dealt with here in Cochise County and a lot of them is since I've taken over the sheriff. Mm -hmm. uh, my citizens coming out at 11 o'clock at night being assaulted. Uh, all the way from home invasions. I've had one citizen that's been burglarized. Not why they've been home. I, I call them home invasions. And people are trying to break in their homes. Right. What kind of quality of life does that to live? Mm -hmm. and, and we think of America as a as a land of the brave and the free, and we've earned this through our historical values and uh, our wars. But you think about it. I mean, people in Cochise County aren't living that anymore, and that's sad. I mean, that's sad. We need to all take a big look at this. And, uh, and not just leave everything to read and see. I, I leave my, and I tell citizens, come down to Cochise County, we'll take you to the border, we'll show you what's going on down here. And then when you go back and you say, hey, it's not what we saw on TV, this is real. You talked earlier when we were on the border about this shootout that happened, and um, the local media covered that, but the uh, national media never picked that up. And uh, people just aren't aware of what life is really like inside the perimeter, the 50 mile perimeter that the Border Patrol is setting up. Correct. So, um, it, it is, it's, it's alarming to live in a community and we have a lot of uh, rural communities throughout Cochise County. This one was a community of a couple thousand people that had a lot of agriculture, farming going on in this community and you know they live, they're great people and they eat great values and um, but to wake up at three in the morning to a, a, a huge shootout with drug drug folks and 100 rounds spent, fired, four people shot. I mean, you think of the big cities when this stuff happens. But no, this is rural rural America and down here on the border. This is, this is sad. Well, thank you again for your hospitality, but more importantly, thank you for your service to this state and our nation because through here is what affects cities all across the country and you're, you're on the front line, so I appreciate it and I hope we can come back and visit with you again in the future. We'll leave the light on for you, Bob. And, and second of all, I appreciate what you're doing to get the word out there that it's not the glamour border like they like to paint it. So, thank you. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you, Bob.